Copyright 2023 On Mars Records All Rights Reserved Contact information available on ericmars.com On Mars Records produces Dear Dreamer Dear Dreamer This isn't a story about a musical artist who luckily worked on something the stars align in a perfect way and just made it overnight. This can be a guide or a warning hazard for those who fall into the same idea of dreams staying as dreams. I write to you to show you how a kid from a small town saw the moment to create something. I did it. My name is Eric Mars. I was 14 years old when I became exposed to the Beatles. I saw a perfect world, fame, fortune, and pure excitement. Then a moment struck when Paul looked at the camera with his left eyebrow raised and a huge grin. It was almost like Paul saw through time and the camera itself to look at me with a face saying, this is possible. I thought about this for a very long time. Mental state and influences. I told myself that I would become famous. I focused on the idea of learning step by step from the Beatles and others you hear about on the news on how they made it. I watched every interview. I read and sang each lyric and I obsessed more and more than the average fan. As years passed, I only dreamed of being great and told myself to focus on being great. I forced myself to be patient with the newest records that the Beatles made. I started with the old material, then moved up to the new. As I was studying each bass line, drum hit, and guitar bend, I finally hit a song on the White Album that truly created my career. A song called While My Guitar Gently Weeps. This song starts and I am transformed. I feel that each note leads to another so effortlessly. I was in trance in my bedroom waiting for each note to be plucked. And by the time the song was over, I was born. I told myself I must learn how to play guitar, bass, piano, everything, and even write lyrics. As my own instructor, I told myself that I have finally graduated from being a focused consumer to being an idol. I remembered that my sister had a guitar in her closet. As I played that same song on my earphones, I imagined myself playing on that same old guitar. Knowing that the guitar was broken, the image was still clear. By the time I was in the middle of the song, I told myself, stop the song and get the guitar. So I did. I walked into my sister's room and asked where the guitar was. On a mission to the top, I was adamant for the first time in my life. My sister said, I think it's inside the closet, but I think it's broken. I said, I know. I reached for the guitar and my hands followed the back end of the neck, letting those loose strings float around my fingers. I took the guitar back into the room to inspect it, to see the problem and fix it as soon as possible. I noticed the tuner piece had popped off and wasn't able to twist. I tuned the other strings using an app on my phone for guidance and I strummed the chord. You can tell that the string was missing from one strum. I laid it on my bed. I thought about the guitar for a long time. Days would pass and I told myself, how am I going to fix this? I don't have any money nor have the chance to pay for someone to fix it. I focused on the issue and noticed the shape of the guitar's tuning head. It reminded me of the back end of a hammer. I sat and wondered, it would work, I said in my head. I ran downstairs and asked my mom for the hammer. And by the time I knew it, I had tuned the guitar fully into place. Regardless of the guitar's age, not one string pop. I practiced for months on an old dusty classical guitar. And this was my test. It was time for me to play each bass line, drum hit, and guitar bend that I learned. Chapter two, a band with no arms. After some time, I became really familiar with the guitar. Once again, told myself to move on to the next stage, writing music. Going to school was hard because it took time away from my goals. I was a kid in middle school, wishing to do more than my age can prove. But still, I was fantasizing to my friends that the dream was real. I felt like I pushed a lot of people that I talked to from day to day into believing in something that only I was able to see. After weeks passed, I met three close friends who believed in me. I told them, let's make a band, let's try to create this, let's make this happen. After much convincing, they all said yes. We named ourselves The Lyrics. I was excited and overjoyed at the idea that when I'm on stage, I can look across and see a friend. Four months of me asking them to meet for a band meeting went by, and not one band session happened. Unfortunately, I didn't know that the dream that I was creating was only my dream.
I didn't realize this until the next band I made with two different members, replacing the two that didn't make effort. Jose Montoya, Anthony Cruz, and I only met once. The other member was no longer interested and had left the group without conversation. I remember us singing two songs and testing our voices together in Anthony's bedroom. And after this, it became just another hangout. I remember on our way out the door, Anthony's mom said, You all sounded great. This is the very first compliment we received. I walked out knowing that the dream could happen. I remembered Paul's reaction, rewinding it again and again in my head on my way back home. Keeping the dream alive. After I found out that Anthony had to go find work.